Good morning, Ugly Mug marketing friends and followers. Welcome to another edition of Ugly Mug Marketing Coffee Chats, the live show where we drink coffee and talk about marketing, business, leadership, gosh, everything in between. Uh, I'm so excited today because I'm joined by Miss Mara Barrett. Mara is our SEO guru, operations guru too, behind the scenes at Ugly Mug. She <laughs> makes sure that we have all the systems and processes in place. And if there isn't one, she creates them. But I'm really excited because today Mara and I are going to be talking all about PPC advertising. If you don't know what PPC advertising is, it is pay per click advertising. And I'm going to let Mara kind of dive into all of that. But before we dive into the nitty gritty, Mara, for those who haven't had the chance to see your lovely face before or meet you in person, tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been at Ugly Mug Marketing, where you're from, and what you like to do for fun. Yes. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Mara. I have been here at Ugly Mug for six years. Um, and originally from Pennsylvania, came down after Hurricane Katrina to help rebuild, and then never left. Um, but I absolutely love it here. And for fun, I spending time outside is probably my favorite thing to do. I do that by hiking or photography or just, you know, hanging out. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I totally forgot that that is like how you ended up in Louisiana, though. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yep. <laughs> and then, wait, did you transfer from a school to yes. LCU? Or, okay, okay. Yes. It's coming back. So it's I went to a now. school in Pennsylvania. I was going to an uh, art school in Pennsylvania, and then I transferred down here and finished my degree. Nice. Okay, okay cool. Yeah. I was like, wait, I, I knew that story. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. So obviously brought you on today so that we can talk about PPC. Your email yesterday was awesome. That went out to our email subscribers. If you're not an Ugly Mug Marketing email subscriber, every Tuesday we have an educational email that goes out, has a different theme and topic. And spoiler alert, it's usually around the same theme and topic that we're talking about on Coffee Chats. Not always, but usually. And Mara had some amazing tips to share around PPC advertising and really three steps that we can take to become more efficient in our PPC advertising, but also in that efficiency, naturally results are going to get better. And so therefore our performance is going to, to get better as well. But before we start talking about those three steps, can you just give us a quick brief overview of what PPC advertising is for those who are tuning in and they're like, hey, someone recently told me I should be doing PPC advertising, but I don't really understand what it is or how it works. Yeah, definitely. And so you actually gave the definition at the beginning. PPC stands for pay per click advertising. So most of the time during today's conversation, we'll be talking about Google. That's because that's the highest um, search engine in North America. So that's what we're working with right now as far as our conversation. But this is available on all search platforms. So PPC, pay per click advertising, what you're doing is you are paying Google or paying your search engine to have your name, your website name, link, a key special that you have, something running at the top of the page or as top, mm -hmm. close to the top as possible so that when yep. people search a related keyword um, or phrase, they see your information and they click on it to go to your website. So the ultimate goal is to get clicks to your website. Yep, yep. And so that is essentially when we see, let's say I'm searching for coffee shop in Raleigh, and then maybe at the top it says sponsored, or mm -hmm. you know, or maybe I'm yeah. searching wedding guest dresses. <laughs> and before all the shop stuff appears with the beautiful pictures, sometimes there will be mm -hmm. an ad or something from like Lulu's or from mm -hmm. you know another boutique that carries wedding guest dresses. <laughs> and so when it says that sponsored, that's essentially the pay-per-click ad, correct? Correct. Yep. Awesome. Okay, that cool. For those who are visual learners, I know we didn't actually have a visual, but if you're like, hmm, example of what that <laughs> is, there you go. There's the example. Yes. So obviously, <laughs> pay-per-click advertising can be great for a lot of different industries. And maybe for some, 
not so great or maybe a little bit more difficult. Can you kind of speak mm-hmm. to what types of companies typically thrive with pay-per-click advertising? And when I say thrive, I mean they're not only getting clicks and traffic to their website, but maybe conversions are coming as a result of that mm-hmm. or just speak a little bit more to that. Yeah, definitely. So the easiest answer and might not always be the correct answer that you might get from other people would be anyone. Anyone can use PPC ads. But let's break that down because we do want this to be effective for you and for your company. So yes, you can do PPC ads. If you have a website, you can use them. But are they effective for you? And so what we've seen is businesses that have a long or a high customer lifetime value. So they're with you and they stay with you and they Mm. continually make you money. Those types of businesses do really well with PPC. So some of those could be doctors, counselors, dentists. Um, We actually have a couple counselors as clients. We have a dentist and doctors as clients. So all of those types of companies do really, really well because it honestly could just take one search, one click for them to find your website, feel comfortable enough with you to make that connection and then stay with you for however long. Um, So businesses with a high lifetime value of a client, those do really well with PPC. But then also businesses that have high margins. So your HVAC Mm. companies, your contractors, um, utility providers, sometimes lawyers, those type companies that get um, a lot of margin back, but they're needed by the consumer, those do really well with PPC advertising as well. Um, yeah. And along with that, some of those, like, I don't know, I'm looking for a car right now, so the thing that pops into my mind <laughs> is vehicle sales. This honestly could do really well with PPC as well because there is a higher margin um, and you can draw people in from bordering states or different cities that find a better value with your company. So those are all some more specific examples. But if you want to break it down even more, businesses that have hard to find items. So items mm. that you can't find on Amazon or aren't at your local Walmart, things that might be strange, <laughs> take a little more digging. Those do really well because that's the only place people can find them unless they yeah. word them out. And that's usually harder to get through. Um, and then kind of along with that, places like Amazon and other businesses that have a wide variety of products, those also do well because you are reaching multiple different um, groups of people with your ads because you can have multiple different ads going. So those are all businesses that do well with it. Um, But like I said, if you have business and you want to see what PPC can do for you, just keep in mind your return on investment. So your margin of how much you're spending versus how much you're getting back. That's probably the one thing I would say with that question. Yeah. And do you find that that is easy to track via PPC versus other advertising avenues? So PPC is very trackable. So if somebody clicks on the link, goes to your website, takes an action immediately from that click, it's all tracked. Mm -hmm. That money can be all connected to that app. Where it becomes difficult is people like me don't make decisions that quickly. So Mm -hmm. I find an ad, I go to a website, I check it out, I pin the website, or I send it to my fiance, something like that where I'm not making the decision right away. So I go back to the website later, but that is not tracked in PPC. So getting Mm. the clicks, getting the visitors to the website is definitely tracked. The actions that they take from that, if it's still all in the same thought process, does get tracked. But if it's something that's passed or a different time frame that is not connected. Yeah. I think that I love that insight for a variety of different reasons. But the reason that I ask that question at all is because so often I think people come to us or I hear my other friends who are 
small business owners and are not currently working with an agency or anything like that. And they're like, it's hard for me to want to invest in X, Y, and Z marketing tactic or strategy or, you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. because I don't necessarily know that I'm going to get my money back from it. Right. It feels like too much of a gamble. And initially it is a bit of a gamble, I would say. And it does require time to see if the strategy is going to actually provide a return, or it might be that you implemented something and it needs just a little bit of tweaking or a little bit of pivoting. And I think that's why a lot of times, yes, you can do this on your own, but a lot of times it's a really good idea to hire professionals because, and this is not at all me pitching Ugly Mug and hiring (laughs) us for PPC, y'all, but there is a lot of time and a lot of energy. And in Mara's email yesterday, she spoke about hey, the amount of time that you put into this is essentially how good your results are going to be. And so if you personally do not have the time to invest in learning and pivoting and monitoring, then maybe your results won't quite be what your expectations are. And so maybe it means that you have to hire someone to monitor and track and handle that for you so that you can get your those results a little bit quicker. Maybe, hey, it's not going to all happen overnight by any means, but maybe in by the end of month two, we're starting to see that return on investment. And mm-hmm. I also like that you said, oh gosh, what did you just say? You were talking about how results Never mind. I'm going to skip that thought. I'm going to skip that thought so we can keep going. But um, but yes, the, all that question, they're, I think they, that's just so relatable. Yeah. So I don't know if this is what you were talking about, but when with PC, everything is tracked. So you see how yes. many clicks you get. You see how many impressions you get. You see how much money you're spending. So you know, okay, each cost me this much money. Now, where it gets really good is you can then forecast or plan your Mm. advertising if you know typically it takes x amount of clicks to get a conversion on my website or it takes x amount of phone calls to get a client once you know that information then you can base the budget that you're spending on how many you need and it is much much easier to track something like that than for example a billboard necessarily know how many people are driving by that billboard before someone calls you. Those numbers aren't like as solid as what you can see in the PPC reports. Yeah, that's so good because we are worried about our budgets, right? Like we are worried about that investment. And so (laughs) so that, yes, that is what I was going to touch on. (laughs) That trackability, that, that being able to bridge the gap between I spent I'm making this up. Mm-hmm. I spent $10 on PPC ads. That cannot be a viable budget. Maybe $10 a day. But <laughs> I spent $10 on PPC ads and I got $100 in revenue in my mm-hmm. business. Like being able to bridge that gap is incredibly valuable. But gosh, so much goodness in what you just said about forecasting and then being able to strategically determine, hey, I need to invest more in PPC versus billboards or versus even social media. Like ads. Yeah. Maybe I need maybe I'm getting a higher return on leads that are coming or traffic that is coming to my website via PPC ads versus a traffic campaign that I'm running on Facebook or Instagram or maybe I'm getting a higher quality lead or maybe hey when we're going back and looking at the data of all of the leads that have come through in the last year from our PPC campaigns the people that come back more frequently or have that higher lifetime value that you mentioned earlier Maybe we can track and then see that those people came initially from PPC campaigns. Maybe there are trends and things that we can draw from that data once we've been able to collect it. So, so much oh, yeah. is there. I love, <laughs> I love all of that because I think people sometimes when they think about advertising too, and then I'll stop blabbering as they're just like, oh, a pretty ad or a thing, but there's so uh, much yeah. math and like, strategy (laughs) behind (laughs) determining where, how, when things are going to look. I feel like it's mostly that. Like once you figure out what's working for you, then it's a a numbers game of determining, all right, if I'm trying to grow by X percent and I know I can get this many people into the funnel using this tactic or this method, like 
it's a math problem from there. So, okay. Moving on. But so, for so an much example on that, before we, before we move on all the way, an okay. example of that is we had a client in December um, who said at the end of November, they said, hey, we got X number of leads for the month of November. For December, we really need to hit X. So we looked at the math, literally just math, and said, okay, if you hit this much in November, this is the ad spend. In order to hit this much, this is the amount of ad spend that we need. And they got the amount of leads that they needed for the month of December, simply adjusting the ad spend because we had all of the data previously. So get the data, know what you're looking at, and you can go really, really far. Yes, that's so good. And I love that. I Examples are great. We love a good example. All right. So this was titled, the reason I was trying to trying to move along a little bit was this, this whole conversation was titled, you know, three ways that you can increase efficiency um, and ultimately performance with your PPC campaigns. And so I want to make sure that we spend some time talking about those three key uh, tips, mm -hmm. steps that you feel can help us m make progress in that way. Yeah, definitely. So if you read my email yesterday, you will know some of this. If you did not, great, here we go. <laughs> so the first thing that you can take away from this conversation today is automation. Make sure you are automating your app. There's so much that Google's platform has allowed um, you as the user to adjust or change. And if you know what you're doing and you have the time, by all means, do it. But for those who don't have the time, who are trying to make it through, you're an entrepreneur, you don't have somebody else helping you, automate your ads. It's going to make a world of difference. There are so many different ways you can automate as well. You can do it in the creation of the ads. You can do it in um, your testing of the ads. So which one is working better? You can do it in optimization. So is this ad the absolute best that it can be so the most amount of people can see it? And then you can also automate your reporting. So all of those numbers we just talked about, you can get them a whole lot faster and more concise to what you need to see based off of the automation that Google allows. Um, so automate. Make sure you are putting things into practice that you don't have to do all the work. Yes. We love automation. I'm all about automation. I know you didn't talk about Zapier. I don't even know if Zapier is applicable, but if you're looking for an automation tool just in other aspects of your life or your marketing, go look up Zapier. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah loves it. <laughs> um, actually, all of the automation is done through the Google Ads platform, so you don't even have to go anywhere else. You can just do it right on the platform. One specific way you can do this is through Performance Max. So typically when you're setting up a campaign with Google, you choose whether to search or display YouTube ads, shop, um, maps, any of those types of ads, and you run with it based off of that. Performance Max, you make one campaign and it gets sent out to all of the different platforms. So if you haven't looked into that before, I would highly suggest doing that. Um, honestly, if you Google Performance Max, there will be a lot of information. Go to one that says Google Ads, so they give you the correct information. Um, but it, it's super helpful because it does save time in the setup process. It makes your life a whole lot easier, and it's getting you to multiple different platforms, all within Google, but multiple different areas. Um, so if you haven't used Performance Max, I would suggest trying it. Some people only want to do search ads, and that is perfectly okay. Only do search ads if that's what works best for your company. But if you haven't tried it before and are trying to get details or information on whether it would work for you, I would do that. Yeah. So essentially, if you're just getting started, using Performance Max is a good way to help you determine what's working and not working. And then you can say, hey, I'm not going to use Performance Max. I'm only going to focus in these key areas that provide me the best results. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so the performance max is goal based. So some others that you can use are more conversion based or ROI based. Okay. Performance max is goal based. So if you have a goal number that you want to reach as far as conversions or clicks, that is super helpful for you. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, great. What is tip number two? <laughs> tip number two. So we have talked about money a lot <laughs> in this past, what, 20 minutes? Um, budgeting, all of that. And it's because PPC ads, you can spend a whole lot of money. So in order to help you use smart bidding, smart bidding is AI based. So it's based and learns from previous things that have been done on your campaign. And it helps with choosing the correct number of money that you want to bid on for an ad okay. and what gets you the most number of conversions based off of that bid. So basically it walks through audience signals, conversions that you've received in the past, clicks that you've received in the past, compares it with the amount of money that you've spent and then helps you with your current ad. So use smart bidding. That's like a very high level overview. So definitely dig into that more, but um, it it will manage and help balance your spending. Okay, love it. And this is my favorite one, number three. Be prepared for change. <laughs> so, oh, change. Mara, nobody likes change. The algorithm, no one likes everything. Change. It's always it's <laughs> always changing. <laughs> Yes, it's always changing. No one likes it, but you'll like it a whole lot more if you actually embrace it. <laughs> so if you are prepared for it and you don't have this idea set mind that says, okay, I got this ad writing. We're good to go for the next six months. If you don't come into it like that, but you come into it with, okay, I got this ad writing. We're going to use this for as long as it works. And if something new comes along, we're going to jump on that and adjust it. That perspective is going to help you first of all, with your strength, but it's going to actually help you with your goals, your company goals, and not overspending at all. So just be prepared for change to happen because it will and keep in touch with all of the changes that Google sends. So Google is very open about changes. They let you know. They'll send you emails. They'll say, hey, this new update has come. You might want to go check it out. And honestly, in most of those emails, there's a button that says, go to my account. So they want you to succeed. You just have to pay attention to what they're saying. And I think those are oftentimes the emails that we see come in from Google or we think it's some newsletter or something that does not impact us or affect us. And so we just immediately send it to trash or we mark it as spam mm -hmm. or we <laughs> just leave it in our inbox but never open it. And so you're saying we do need to be paying attention to those emails mm -hmm. and to those alerts because they do share. And and that was going to be my question. Like, where do I find this information? And I think often, <laughs> not to bash Facebook, but I feel like sometimes Facebook is terrible about sharing updates or changes. Um, at least like via email, I think when you're logging into your ad account regularly or checking on your page, sometimes there will be a banner that says, hey, this is changing or, hey, this feature is going to be removed soon or, hey, this feature was removed. And so you need to make these tweaks and changes. <laughs> but so it sounds like with Google, it's primarily via email, right? Or mm -hmm. potentially a notification when you log yeah. into your account. Yeah, sometimes there'll be notifications in your account. Most of the time you'll get a notification via email. Um, but if you ever have any questions, Google has a support page with step-by-step -step instructions on most of this thing. Um, so if you go to google.com slash support, maybe, uh, very easy to find. But <laughs> if you go there, you can search questions um, and you can get all the information that you need. Amazing. Of course, if I you love have that. any questions, you can call us. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I'm like, shoot us a DM on Instagram or Facebook, mm -hmm. drop a comment on YouTube, send us a message on LinkedIn. However, we are here to help, which is why we do these coffee chats in the first place. So to recap, yes. Mara's three steps for increasing efficiency and performance with your PPC ads. Number one is automation, making sure that we're using the tools that are native to Google that allow us to have really simple and seamless automations built in so that we don't have to do the busy work or any of that, right? We talked also, oh, and what was the tool again that you mentioned for that power or something? 
Oh, performance was that for max. campaigns? Oh, performance max, mm -hmm. not power. Performance max. So making sure that you're utilizing performance max for automating those ads. Great for those of you who are just getting started with PPC campaigns and are trying to figure out what placement or type of PPC campaign is going to provide the best results for you. Point number two or step number two is smart bidding. You utilizing the smart bidding AI tools so that they do the math for you in determining how much you should be spending <laughs> per click and what budget you should assign to your campaigns, all of that great stuff. Don't think about it. Just use smart bidding. <laughs> and then number three was being prepared. So don't delete those fun emails from Google. Actually take the time to read them, even if they are a little long. Sometimes I'm sure they're short with just a quick update. But those quick, small updates or the big updates, both can make an impact on the performance of your campaigns and maybe your overall efficiency of you going in and setting up those campaigns if there are any changes with the interface, which sometimes there, there are those types of changes too. And you want to be aware. So when you're logging in to set up new campaigns and you're like, wait, this button used to be here and now it's not. Where do I go? How do I do the things? Uh, just overall, make sure that you're staying on top of things when it comes to new updates and those little emails that you will get from Google from time to time. Awesome. Yes. Well, Mara, <laughs> this has been so insightful and helpful. Uh, do you have any other lasting like tips or tricks for, for PPC? Um, I know we kind of like skipped over this, so maybe we'll we'll end on this. But like, what types of metrics do you feel like make a successful PPC campaign? Because I know you kind of touched on like mm -hmm. performance max is goal oriented. So like, I'm sure that that has to do with whatever your goal is. But what should our goals be with PPC or what can we expect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. A lot of that depends on company's goals and what you're trying to accomplish but high level without digging into specific companies what you need to know is the amount of people that you come that are coming to your website how they're getting there and then what they're doing once they get there and so all of that can be tracked through ppc and google analytics and combining those together um, but expectation wise with ppc Goals would be phone calls or link clicks. Those are the two okay. biggest ones that all of our clients use, phone calls and link clicks. Um, phone calls are directly connected if they click the phone call button on the ad. So if they go to your business listing and click it, it doesn't count connected to Google Ads. But if they go from the ad, same with link clicks. If they go from the ad, then it's connected directly to that. Um, those are where people see the most amount of conversions, <laughs> depending on what you're labeling them. Goals, conversions are similar. Um, so I would say phone calls and link clicks. But what gets tricky is when it comes to link clicks is you have to have a good website. Because mm. if you just have a link and you don't have any kind of conversion, a lot of times it's because the people who found the link either don't want to take any action or it's just awful. So make sure your website is not awful so that people going to your link actually can find benefit from it and do something on your website. So that kind of goes back to Mallory's conversation from last week. Make sure your website is up to date and all of the things because the money you're spending on PPC ads would technically be wasted if there's nothing to do or the website's off and people are just leaving. So yeah, I would say yeah. link clicks, phone calls would be your two biggest ones. Yeah. And you're really speaking about yes, impressions or overall first impressions or yes. what someone yes. thinks or feels when they get onto your website. And it's about the user experience as well. Uh, yeah, and of course that's a part of what they think of your website when they get there, but how easy was it to navigate or was there a call button for them to click on or did they find, like you just said, the information that they were looking for? Gosh, all of that is so 
crucial because you can have a really killer PPC campaign running, but you're not going to see those link click or those clicks maybe on the website, or you're not going to see those phone calls coming through if when they get to the website, they aren't finding what exactly they need. So this is all yeah. tied, connected together, right? Because it we could really... take it a step further and we could say, mm -hmm. well, then if the person who answers the phone is not well-trained and doesn't know what to say and doesn't answer <laughs> the right way, then you're definitely not going to convert. So it's all of the things that I feel like we talk about on Coffee Chats are all, marketing-wise, are all tied to creating an experience for the customer. The customer yeah. is not going to come back or they're not going to play, make the phone call or in the first place, or they're not going to actually schedule the appointment once they get on the phone call. If all of these things aren't tightened up and really good, right? To create that, yeah. that remarkable experience for them. And not, not to dig too far in the weeds with us being past time, but um, <laughs> Google actually pays attention to user experience as well. So when they're choosing whose ad gets chosen to be that first or top spot, there's a whole lot of detail into who gets chosen. A lot of it has to do with budget, but some of it has to do with user experience too and your Google ranking and how Google sees your website. So if your user experience on your website is not great, they're not going to recommend you for that keyword whenever someone searches it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That could be a whole that could be a whole other episode, Mara. <laughs> but for the sake of time today, being respectful of your time for those of you tuning in and of Mara's time, we're going to wrap things up today. Next week, Wednesday, another edition of Coffee Chats coming to you live, y'all, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. I'm going to be talking with Franny Francisco. He goes by Franny. I'm going to be talking with Franny from our website department. He's our website coordinator. He is awesome. We're not really going to be talking about websites, though. I think Franny wants to talk about TikTok. So we're going to just see what Franny has to say about TikTok <laughs> and all the things, short form video and everything in that world, y'all. So it's going to be a great episode. Tune in next week, Wednesday, same place, same time, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook Live, always available for replays on all of those platforms as well. Mara, thank you again for all of your wisdom and for going into the weeds. A little bit with me on some of those things, <laughs> even though slightly, slightly off topic, but still, still on topic in some ways. Uh, we will yeah. catch y'all next week. Thank you so much for tuning in, whether you were live or catching the replay. We'll see you again soon. Bye, Bye. everyone.